One of the things about making stuff is that I'm never entirely sure the best way to share our projects. But with the way the technology in our pockets is getting better all the time, maybe now the best way to share the stuff that we make is actually to scan it and put it on the internet for people to see and download. Maybe even check it out in virtual reality, I don't know. We live in the future and man, it is weirder and cooler than I ever thought it would be. What's up makers, Trevor here for Love Make Share and I'm back in the shop with some first impressions of an app that the kids and I have been messing around with this past week. Little bit of history, back in 2014, I wrote a blog post called Turning Physical Memories into Digital Ones with Photogrammetry. In it, I talked about using an old Autodesk app called 123D Catch to scan a crap that the kids and I did. Well, that whole 123D line of apps is gone now, it's closed down, and ever since it did close down, I've been looking for a replacement for an easy and quick way to scan our projects, save them for posterity, and maybe share them with somebody else. So here is where this week's app comes in. Enter Clone by IQ Technologies. It's a free app for both iOS and Android that through a combination of augmented reality, a printed scanning mat, and some clever computer vision promises to be a much easier and simpler way to scan an object using only your phone. So, how does it work? Well, first I downloaded the app on my Samsung Note 5. Then we printed the scanning mat from Clone's website, placed the object that we want to scan on top of the scanning mat on a flat surface, and then move around the object with the app scanning as we go. At that point, you keep circling the object from different elevations until all the faces on the augmented reality dome in the app get filled in. So the scan is complete, the app processes all the data that you put into it, and then gives you a finished textured object that you can then export to different online services or your social media. So uh, let's take a look at our first attempt in practice. What the bananas are covering? Yeah, they're too big. Okay, let's try something smaller. So yeah, we had a little trouble on our first try. It turns out the initial calibration we did was a little bit off, and as a result, we just could not get a scan to complete. We had problems like the AR dome flipping around 180 degrees at random. It was kind of wild to watch. With that kind of inconsistency and, and jitteriness, there was just no way we could get all of the faces on the AR dome to fill in, and as a result, there was no finished model at the end of the process. Now here's the most difficult part about that for me, is because there's no obvious way to recalibrate within the app, I had to actually uninstall the app and reinstall it so that I could recalibrate. But all that said, once we had the thing properly calibrated, it became a lot quicker and easier to scan objects. So we gathered up an assortment of cool things we had, put the scanning mat on a rotating cake plate, uh, and spun them around in front of the camera, and it seemed to work out really well. So here's the thing about this. The results were extremely cool and also extremely mixed. The good stuff is very good. The feedback that you get during the scanning process is clear and direct. This is not at all the case for other apps I've tried. You really don't get a sense of what you're doing until the end of the process. So having that continuous real-time feedback as you go is really, really welcome. Uh, the, the augmented reality dome that the app puts over your object is a really cool way to visualize the scanning process and give you a very clear sense of how much you still have to do. The other thing I love about the scanning process is that there's this little voxelized representation of the object that you're scanning uh, that's in the lower corner of the screen. So at any time, if you see that you're getting results that don't relate to what you're trying to scan, then you can stop the scan and start again under better conditions. You don't have to wait until the very end of the process to know if things are working out or not. 
all of this adds up to a scanning experience that is actually really fun and like joyful in a way that no other app like this that I've used has really bothered to care about giving the user. I just, I can't say how much I appreciate the attention to fit and finish and look and feel in that part of the process. Uh, one thing the app does not make it all clear, however, is that the AR dome is the absolute hard cutoff limit of the scanning range. So to, to do anything longer than about that long, you need to print a scanning mat bigger than a letter size printer. So I would have to get access to a printer that would say print 11 by 17 to, I don't know, scan a banana for scale, which is a thing that we tried. Okay, something else that I really want to commend Clone for is giving us the option to scan multiple poses of a single object. So the idea is you do a scan, you rotate the object on the scanning mat, and then you do another scan, and the app will intelligently stitch those two together, interpolate between them, and give you a more refined result. The fact that the app can seamlessly match two views of the same object and match them together into one final result is extremely impressive. So, hey, kudos to Clone for that. It's, in fact, it's, it's so cool and so effective that I would really love to see them give us the option to do more than just two poses or two scans of a single object uh, going forward in future updates. All right, so that's the scanning process. After the scan, here's where things get a little bit more mixed. In fact, for me, I would call these results a little disappointing, actually. Now, I will give a huge caveat to my disappointment. I am using an older phone. Like I said at the top, I'm using a refurbished Galaxy Note 5 from Samsung. It is uh, no spring chicken. Uh, I suspect, and some other reviewers online have pointed out, that if you use a more modern device with a higher resolution camera, then the results are gonna be better. That makes total sense to me. Uh, and in fact, I would love to have a new phone to do more of this kind of stuff with. However, I don't, and a lot of people don't, so the fact is, the result I got was the result I got, and here's the result I got. Let's talk about the two things that we get as a result. One is the object itself. Generally speaking, what I've noticed is that it produces a very high density mesh with very low surface detail. So there are a whole bunch of little triangles that make up the mesh, and there are a lot of them. Like, kind of a ridiculous number for the amount of detail you actually get out of it. Fine details are very easily lost in the processing. The takeaway about the mesh density and the surface detail is this. If you're looking for this as a low cost method to scan an object and then 3D print it later, it's maybe not the best option for you. You're just, you're not gonna get an accurate facsimile with the texture layer stripped away. Uh, regarding the textures, they look okay from a distance, like if you're zoomed out, but once you get up on top of it, they are very chunky and blurry and just generally not awesome. They would not hold up under scrutiny from a close distance. So we have this great scanning experience, provided you're correctly calibrated, followed by okay output, depending on how scanning went. And then this is where the user experience starts to go downhill fast. So there are tools within the app to refine your object. So this is kind of your standard gamut of tools like smoothing, sculpting, uh, extruding a little bit. There's some uh, texture adjustment that you can do. It's, it's cool that they packed it into the app. Uh, however, those tools are not fun to use and they don't give very good feedback as to what you're doing and what the result is going to be. 
So we go from this beautiful user experience and interface in the scanning process to something that is just kind of uh, opaque and not very user friendly. And then here's something that I want you to check out. Once you're done and you're happy with your object, so for example, this watch, um, then you can go and export it. So I wanted to upload it to this online service Sketchfab uh, where you can, it's just uh, a service for uploading and sharing 3D objects. So I go to upload it to Sketchfab and I get this. Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, it gives absolutely no indication of progress. And in fact, multiple times it kicked me off that screen and told me that the upload was failed when in fact I ended up uploading that model of my watch like five times. Uh, other sharing options are a little bit better. I uploaded a video to Facebook, it uploaded quickly and painlessly. Uh, I also uploaded a number of videos from the app to my OneDrive account, which I then used to pull onto my desktop computer in order to make this video. That was also a very seamless experience, so great. But when it comes to the videos, I was still lacking feedback to know what was going on in the app, so was it rendering a video? I don't know, there was a little wheel doing this, I assume it was doing something. What was the upload progress? It didn't say. And then in the end, kind of a common theme with Clone, the video itself was kind of low resolution and chunky, I'm not super psyched about the video quality. Certainly not something that I would be using for professional videos anytime soon. Uh, I know that professionals would probably have better tools than the in-app export feature, but bear with me. I was looking for something a little slicker. So the Android version of the app doesn't have support for a lot of other services yet, but I understand that those are coming and they are already in the iOS app. So things like uploading to Shapeways so that you can have your object 3D printed. And there are a bunch of other file formats you can export your object in like STL, OBJ, kind of these standard file formats that you might be using for any number of applications. Those, however, are not free. Those require a small in-app purchase. Uh, that said, in-app purchases are kind of a dirty word, but I will say um, there's so much for free that you're bound to find lots to keep you occupied as you get going. So to sum up, here are some first impressions of Clone. On the pro side, it is easy and surprisingly fun to scan stuff. You get great visual feedback during the scanning process. Scanning multiple poses is a really brilliant and impressive feature. You can share to Sketchfab as a textured object. And in that context, those objects look okay. Uh, you can share it easily to social media and elsewhere as a video. And there are tons of free features to get you started. And from what I've seen, the in-app purchases seem reasonable. On the downside, the resulting object doesn't look uh, all that great, at least if you're using older hardware to create it like I am. The editing tools packed in the app are just not fun at all. And all of the sharing and exporting that you can do really lacks feedback. Okay, so here I am after all that with one question. Clone, what am I gonna use this thing for? I mean, personally, there are a few things that automatically come to mind when I think about what I might use an app like this for. First, Obviously 3D scanning, we get 3D printing. Um, at least with the hardware I'm using and the results that I am getting, I would not be rushing to 3D print any of the stuff that I'm getting out of this app. The other thing I was thinking about is, well, what about, I don't know, making a model, scanning it, and then using that scan to place the 3D model into uh, a, a film scene. Maybe using Adobe After Effects' built-in 3D functionality, do a little funky low-budget filmmaking. Well, this is where that quality issue kind of comes in again. Uh, if it's a background element, you might be okay doing that. But as soon as you get up close on one of these objects, the texture resolution just totally falls apart. And it is very apparent that it has been created through less than professional means. So realistically, I think my favorite application for Clone is something like building a digital library or scanning and sharing projects. Clone has some videos on their YouTube channel of school kids doing exactly that. And I think that is a super cool application for this, well, application. The idea that you could have kids in different parts of the world building a communal digital library of the things that affect their everyday lives that they interact with on a regular basis, that is super cool. And there are tons of educational possibilities around this. 
So there's a ton of merit in applications like that. I suspect that we will mess around with it primarily to scan and save our own projects for posterity and to share them with people like you. And there's merit in that too. But we'll see what other trouble we can get in with Clone later on down the road. All in all, I'm excited to spend more time with Clone and see how it develops. If you want to follow along as we experiment with this and continue to mess around with it, um, you can follow us on Instagram at LoveMakeShare. You can also see any of the scans that I did so far in preparation for this video on my Sketchfab account, that's sketchfab.com slash LoveMakeShare. Or you can check out a little bit more information and all the scans over on the blog at LoveMakeShare.ca. Hey, once again, I'm Trevor. Thank you so much for watching Love Make Share. I hope you've been inspired. Go make something. <laughs>